Excellent. Listen, I want to welcome you all to the 12th annual Follow the Entrepreneur. Very special. We're going to tell you why um, today is so special. Um, but first of all, I want to ask you to just ask yourself a basic question of why should we follow the entrepreneur, right? Many of you are from banking or you're ex-bankers or converted bankers or whatever you do after you do banking. You go on to crypto and venture capital and all sorts of things. Um, but uh, many of you will have heard follow the money, right? So why should we follow the entrepreneur? And I want to tell you that the reason why we should is that capital follows ideas. It always has, it always will. And I was really fortunate when I was a young woman in Paris at that age 23 that my friend at the time said to me something which changed my life. He said to me, don't worry about the money, Julie, because he saw that I was like struggling to set myself up in Paris and I was just like, how do I do this, how do I do this? And he said, Julie, don't worry about the money. Focus on your unique contribution. Focus on what you're good at. Focus on what you're meant to deliver to the world and the money will find you. And I remember thinking at the time, well, that's easy for you to say because this guy was very successful and, and, and. And what I decided to do was to not worry about the money, to focus on my individual contribution, my unique contribution, to focus on what I was good at, to focus on what I was meant to do. And I said to myself, you know what? The money may find me, the money may not find me, but I'm going to focus on what I'm meant to do. And sure enough, the less I focus on the money, the less I follow the money, the more the money finds me. And so we don't follow the money at Viva Investment Partners. We follow the entrepreneurs. And what everybody, we're a team of about 15 people. You will have met many of the wonderful people on my team. And you will realize that whether they're based in London or Athens or Zurich, the thing that we're obsessed about is whether we have the best and most, most consistent dialogue with entrepreneurs. Do we actually believe that we have an unfair advantage by the quality of the company that we keep? And we do. And that's why we bring you guys together every year, because this is our business family. This is the business family. If you're here, it's because we have a business family relationship and we want to continue. We value your contribution. We want you to work with us. We want to work with you. But this is more than just an investor summit to just put people on stage and kind of talk about ideas. These are about the relationships that we build our firm with and our firm belief that we should be following the entrepreneur. And what many of you have heard me say is that society works best when it's organized around the entrepreneur. And I'll say that just one more time because you'd be surprised that not everybody believes this. Society works best when it's organized around the entrepreneur. So we believe that Entrepreneurs are society's problem solvers. No matter what's going on, and we've had a lot going on these past couple years, that the entrepreneurs are gonna sort it out. That the men and the women who are literally obsessed, and that's what we're gonna show you over the next day or two, is the men and women and their obsessions. The, the problems that they're solving, the things that they go to bed with thinking about at night, and they wake up thinking about at night, they can't stop talking, they become annoying because they're solving these problems. And that is what takes us to the future. Kicking and screaming, solving the problems of society, bringing their passions to life, getting their obsessions out of their system. But these are the amazing stories of entrepreneurs that go from uh, near-death experiences to breakthrough moments. And we're here to celebrate with many of those who have had already breakthrough moments and many of who have lived to tell the tale of so many near-death experiences and gotten through to the breakthrough moments. And that's the other element of Viva Investment Partners and our friends in the audience who are investors, whether it's the AND Ventures uh, Partners or Spice VC, is that we believe that we're here to help and support and to enable the entrepreneurs to build their businesses. So um, I'd like you to, we are kicking off our Mykonos decade. And what we mean by that is that we're, we are going to own this building the first week of every October, every year for the next decade. We think that we have a great place in Mykonos. Many of you know that I bought a place in Kia last year. I love Kia, love Greece. Uh, I came in 2013 because my book, Welcome to Entrepreneur Country, had been translated into Greek by a lovely woman by the name of Alexandra Vovolini at Economia. She dragged me down for a, um, 
uh, a kind of book tour, and I remember being at the eighth floor of the Grand Britannia Hotel, and I was sitting across from this entrepreneur that I didn't know who he was, but now I know he was one of the most important entrepreneurs in Greece, Marco Varemus of Upstream, and we're chatting, and, uh, and I, I, I kind of said, so, you know, Marco, blah, 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 and, you know, and before you know it, I realized that the guy that was sitting in front of me in 2013 based in Athens had 300 million euros of revenue, and I felt like a really dumb idiot that I didn't know who he was. And I said to him, how many entrepreneurs in kind of in this neck of Europe have businesses the size of yours that are scaling, that are creating new paradigms, defining industries and so forth? And he says, well, I don't know, Julie, about three dozen. And I realized that I fundamentally didn't understand one of the key quadrants where I should be having conversations with entrepreneurs. And I decided that night that I was going to be spending a lot more time in Athens. And so I did. And for those of you who know a little bit about the story of Greece in 2013 and 14, things changed in October 2014. So all of my plans about doing what we're doing today with Viva Investment Partners kind of had to put on hold for five years. Well, things worked through the system and we got a different um, kind of uh, landscape in place. And I came back in November 2019 because there was a very uh, important shift in the, the, the landscape and the platform that Greece became in late 2019. For those of you who haven't listened, this is my only plug, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a good one here. If you haven't listened to the Prime Minister of Greece's Independence Day speech, the Greek Independence Day speech, find it on YouTube and watch it. For those of you, my friends, Mark and Michael in the front row here who work with entrepreneurs branding um, and helping them with reputation, uh, uh, the Prime Minister of Greece, uh, Mr. Mitsotakis, said the following, and it sounded like to the CEO of any startup company, he said he was addressing his countrymen, he was addressing the Greek diaspora, and he said, something good is happening in Greece, and I invite you to believe that something good is happening. And I tell you, I think he had, he had me right there. I thought that it was, an, it was incredible to hear a prime minister of a country tell his countrymen, there's something good happening here, and I need you to believe. The campaign that is, Greece is undergoing right now is fun to be a part of. For Viva, we're a happy Swiss corporation. We have operations in the United Kingdom, we have operations in Switzerland. We work with entrepreneurs around the world. We've had people come in for this conference to 20 different jurisdictions and nationalities. We're super happy to have feet on the street in Greece in the form of Anna Takvorian and Chris Dulke, who are here and many of you know them, to build out our platforms. We have one platform called Kia Naissance, based out of Kia, um, where we're looking to do, Kia is right south of Athens, just a short 30 minute ferry, 20 minutes from the airport. We're hosting um, entrepreneur events there in June, bringing entrepreneurs and investors together, using it as a test pilot zone, creating production facilities for some of our companies. We're gonna be part of the build out of Kia. Tomorrow morning, you're going to hear from Miltos, who's opening up a incredible, the one and only just down the road from where I live in Kia, although there are no roads, but we'll talk about that tomorrow morning. Um, but the one and only is going to completely transform Kia and everybody on the island is excited. But back to Mykonos before I introduce our next um, speaker, our first speaker. I'd like you to imagine with me that you're here in 10 years. This is our Mykonos decade that we're kicking off this morning. Imagine that you're here in 10 years. And instead of Mykonos kind of coming to the, to the close because it comes, Mykonos shuts down in you know, the mid 10th, 15th of October, it changes. This is a, a, a platform, it's, a, it's a, uh, an island which is really alive and kicking and a global place to meet for six months. But imagine in 10 years you come back and imagine that AND Ventures and Spice VC and Viva Investment Partners, imagine that we all have offices here. And imagine that there are some 200 entrepreneurs that native have built their Vashi businesses and drive software solutions and all of the different businesses. And people think not just that it's a great place to go on holiday, and there's not just this discussion of remote working and anybody can work from anywhere, but actually that the problems have been solved. The broadband is sufficiently, consistently outstanding that you could actually 
build a business from one of these islands, whether it's Mykonos or Kia or any of the others. Imagine if the whole idea of living on an island was different than what it is today. That's just one problem that we are focused on and fixated on, is says that I would love to think differently about the way that I work and live. Right now, there are just issues about living out on the islands and building businesses, but I, I invite you to imagine what that could be like and to help us think about that.